Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's and Morning Prayer on this fi Friday, the fifth day of March. Today we celebrate the lives of two medical families, last name Mayo and Menninger, and we'll learn more about them during the service. During Lent, Morning Prayer begins with an opening sentence on page 38 of the prayer book. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Confession of sin takes place on page 41. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord <clears throat> grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue <clears throat> with the Invitatory Psalm this morning. <clears throat> we will read together the Jubilate, which begins on page 45. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. We continue, sorry, we continue with the psalm appointed for today, and we are reading a portion of Psalm 91, verses 9 through 14. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he has bound me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. Now we continue with the scripture assigned for today, a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 8, beginning at the 40th verse. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me 
for I have noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how he had been immediately healed. He said to her daughter, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. <clears throat> Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her, but he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she got up at once. Then he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> we continue with the uh, canticle assigned for today. It's Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb. It begins on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. William W. Mayo, with his two sons, William J. Mayo and Charles H. Mayo, built St. Mary's, the first general hospital in Minnesota. When a devastating tornado struck Rochester, Minnesota in August of 1883, the Mayos joined with the Sisters of St. Francis to respond to the disaster. This partnership between the Episcopalian Mayos and the Roman Catholic Sisters raised a few eyebrows, but became well known for a new type of patient care that emphasized the whole person, spirituality, as well as physical. Building on a vision of doctors working as a team with other medical professionals, not as solo diagnosticians, the Mayos aggressively opened their doors to other doctors and medical researchers. St. Mary's Hospital and what would become the Mayo Clinic became a model for integrating person-centered medical care with the best in cutting edge scientific and medical research. The Mayo Clinics continue today as outstanding centers for patient care and medical research. Charles F. Menninger, together with his sons, Carl and William, were pioneers in establishing a new kind of psychiatric treatment facility in Topeka, Kansas, founded in the year 1925. They played a major role in transforming the care of the mentally ill in ways that were not only more medically effective, but were also more humane. Among the notable achievements of the Menninger Clinic had been its advocacy for better treatment and more informed public policy in support of the needs of the mentally ill. In 1973, Dr. Carl Menninger wrote the influential book, Whatever Became of Sin. The work looks at sin, personal, corporate, and systemic, and insists that recognizing sin within us and among us is a key component in personal and relational health. He believes strongly that naming sin and dealing with its consequences contributes positively to good health in persons and in communities. The book was a standard textbook in theological seminaries for a generation or more. The work of the Mayos and the Menengers was transformative because of their commitment to treating the whole person physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
We continue our service by affirming our faith, reciting together the Apostles' Creed, which begins on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. Pray together the Lord's Prayer, followed by Suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. <clears throat> <clears throat> we continue with the colics. Divine Physician, your name is blessed for the work and witness of the Mayos and the Meningers and the revolutionary developments that they brought to the practice of medicine. As Jesus went about healing the sick as a sign of the reign of God come near, bless and guide all those inspired to the work of healing by thy Holy Spirit that they may follow his example for the sake of thy kingdom and the health of thy people. Through the same Jesus Christ, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue with the colic for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy Spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, the honor of thy name. Amen. Take a moment to offer our thanksgivings and prayers. We give thanksgiving for this week. We look forward to our weekend and we look forward to a new week on Sunday. We give thanks for the blessings that you've given us. The blessings that are too numerous to count. We give thanks for the progress that's made in vaccinating people and working to stem the tide of the pain caused by the coronavirus. We hope that we move forward. We give thanks for the first line responders and caregivers and all the people who have worked so hard in this pandemic. We give thanks for the, and we pray for the people who have worked diligently during the pandemic, whose lives have been changed and the stress that's been added, we pray for recovery. And we pray for a return to normalcy. Take a moment to ask your prayers and thanksgiving. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together the general thanksgiving, which begins on page 58. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. I give thanks as always to Carol Cow for doing the uh, green arrangement <clears throat> on the flowers during the season of Lent. Thank you for joining Morning Prayer this week. I hope that you can join us on Sunday for the, our celebration of the third Sunday during the season of Lent. And look forward to seeing you next week for Morning Prayer. God bless.